I, I want to go to Florida and I want to go to Houston. All right. And it's the reason why I want to talk about Florida and Houston. Uh, coming up next, we got Airbnb squatters. What to do if you underpaid. And then we got a reaction video of a man saying that inflation is killing people and they can't even afford to pay their rent anymore. But right now in South Florida, and I warned you guys, I've been warning you for at least two and a half years about moving to Florida and you can't afford to be there. Over in Florida, they saying inflation is basically pushing people that are natives and people that move there outside of the city. Well, here is something that probably will not surprise you. South Florida has the highest rate of inflation when compared to more than a dozen it of the nation's rich. largest metro areas. Yeah, not surprising, but still very painful. Hmm. The Consumer Price Index released late last week. It showed housing costs are up more than 7% over this time last year. So it begs the question, should you be looking to buy or sell your home now? Hmm. CBS News, my name is Joan Murray, is live in Fort Lauderdale. She looks at what inflation is doing to our real estate market. And Joan, not a pretty picture right now, right? No, it isn't. And we are in Coral Ridge. You may be familiar with it. It's one of the most popular areas of Fort Lauderdale with houses like this. It has good schools. It's near the ocean and a lot of shopping. But with the high inflation rate and also high interest rates, it's very tough to find an affordable home. So turning this for sale sign into a sold sign is very tough on the seller and the buyer. Tommy Bartolomeo bought his Coconut Creek condo in 2005. Then the market took a dive. I was down 80% like that, uh, stuck with it. So now 19 years later, I'm finally back in the black. So do I want to go through that route again? No. Um, so I'm definitely not going to chase the market. Instead, he's chasing what some call the impossible dream, finding an affordable home he and his girlfriend can share. <laughs> to see the market housing prices double, in a, in a few years, I mean, it, it's crazy. I couldn't say that I expected anything like that. Bartolomeo is an aircraft mechanic, his girlfriend a speech therapist. They're looking for a home in Northeast Fort Lauderdale with a price tag in the $600,000 range. At 7% interest, it's still going to be a, a steep payment and, you know. Did he say that they're looking for a house in a six? Okay, so this is an episode of House Hunters. I get it. I get it. We on an episode of House Hunters. So let's let's break it down. All right. <laughs> let's break it down. For the people in the back, just to make sure that we all on the same page. I want to make sure that we all we all get into it. All right. Um let's go into our mortgage calculator right now. All right. So we don't want to go off the all right let's go by the, the purchase budget or we can go by the monthly payment let's go by the monthly payment let's include taxes and fees so they're looking for a six hundred thousand dollar house all right uh i'm assuming that they got a 20 percent down payment which is a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a hundred and twenty thousand dollar down payment that's crazy that is absolutely insane if you ask me, okay? So $120,000 down payment, all right? 30-year mortgage, which is another insane to think that you're going to be doing it for 360 payments. I'm going to show you what his payment is going to be for the, for the rest of his life. Because he's not no young lad. Was that Florida? All right, cool. Let's assume he got a high credit score. 7,500. I think that this is low for property taxes and insurance. I know that I know that this is low because most insurers are pulling out of Florida. Um, PMI, that's only if you have less than 20% down. And it's a it's a strong possibility that you're gonna have an HOA fee. So let's go modest. Let's go three hundred dollars a month for an HOA fee. All right. His total monthly payment for 360 payments, and this don't this is insane. His total monthly payment is going to be $4,500 $4, a month for a house with $600,000. And that's only if you put in $120,000 down. Now, let's assume for the sake of conversation, all right? Let's assume for the sake of conversation that he doesn't put 20% down. Let's say he puts 10% down. Say he puts $60,000 down. 
all right? If you put $60,000 down, your payment balloons to $5,100 a month, right? And your PMI is going to be $248 a month. That's in addition to that. We assuming that your insurance is only going to be $2,100 a year. I call bullshit. Because we know Florida is going to have one of the highest insurance rates. Um, and then property taxes. At a 7% interest rate on a 30-year mortgage. So if he's 45, he's going to pay it until he's 75 years old. And that's how much he's going to be paying a month. $5,100 a month. If you put 10% down, $4,500 a month. If you put 20% down and avoid the PMI. This is unreal. This is unreasonable. And he's an aircraft mechanic and she's a speech therapist. Man, get the heck out of here, bro. Hecky you no. Know. Hecky. And you know what they're going to wind up paying for this house by the time that they get done paying for it? $2 million. By the time that this house is paid for, they're going to be spent over $2 million buying this house. And then they're going to say, but but the, but the, but it went up in value. BS. And I think that Florida is in a bubble. I also think that Florida is in a bubble. I don't, don't want to be house poor. So welcome, Joan, to this beautiful. Broward Realtor Thomas Kane said with interest rates steady at 7% and inflation at about 3.5%, a lot of buyers like Tommy Bartolomeo are sitting on the sidelines. I think if there was any bit of a surety in the market regarding interest rates, we'd see more people come back in as buyers because they could plan accordingly and feel more confident with one of the most important purchases of their life. This home came to the market at the end of January. Cain said properties like who can hold on, bro. Who can afford to pay? And that think about it, y'all. That's not including utilities. That's not including maintenance. That's not including cutting the grass. That's not including water. That's not including none of that stuff, right? Who can afford normal people, everyday people? Because you still got car note, you still got groceries, you still got everything. You still got to replace the, the roof. You still got to deal with alligators, all of that. Who in the world, as in regulars, as a speech therapist and an aircraft mechanic, and pray to God that you don't ever get laid off, who can carry that if they was to get laid off for the next year? Because essentially what you're paying is you're paying over $60,000 a year just to be able to live in Fort Lauderdale. Get out of here, man. This $1.9 million Pompano Beach home with direct ocean access are not selling as quickly. A lot of buyers think it's 2008 it and it's not <laughs> because prices are not dropping. Uh, the other side of that coin is a lot of sellers think it's still 2021 and it's not. And the once reliable condo market isn't the same either. Kane said condo buyers are pumping the brakes on that too because of rising insurance costs and unexpected assessments. The new picture is the educated buyer and the conscientious buyer and the cautious buyer. So where do high interest rates and inflation leave a buyer? Inflation is out of our power. So it's imperative. Look at these numbers. Look at your current payment at the current rates. Lock in your rate. Michelle Smith is a senior loan officer who's been writing mortgages in South Florida for 30 years. Hopefully inflation's gonna come down. It will come down, it's a matter of when. So when it comes down, there'll be an opportunity most likely to refinance. This is called hope. This is the same thing that Obama won on and ran on and won. Listen, if you waiting on hope, if you're banking on hope in order for you to be able to survive, you are in trouble. I'm telling you, listen, I've been telling y'all for years. I knew that it was going to be a flood of homes that's not selling over in Florida. It's the same thing that happened in 2008. In Florida, there is a housing crisis. Insurers are pulling out of the market in Florida and California. No other places in the country. And sure, listen, they're not dumb. Banks are requiring for you to qualify and you really have your stuff together in order to be able to get a home in Florida or in California. 
a lot of homeowners are trying to get out at the top of the market. Now, I can't say that this is something that would then be expanded across the entire United States of America. But what I am telling you is that Florida, it's a lot of people that ran down to Florida and went and bought homes. It's a lot of people that ran down there because they said that, oh man, the weather is better. It is, Florida is a bubble. That is my own personal professional opinion. Florida is a bubble. Why is it a bubble? Because everybody is trying to get out at the top of the market and it is now filling up with a glut of homes and nobody can afford to actually live there as a real estate investor, all right? And I got this coming up in a recent video that I recorded that I'm dropping inside of the Patreon. As a real estate investor, one of my rules, I don't go and invest in million dollar homes. Every single home that I buy it's, in with, it's, with, it's within a certain range. Why? Because you tackle the majority of the buyers. The higher up you go into the market, a lot of people think that that's a smooth move. Look, for all of these athletes and people like y'all that be watching my show and rocking with me and you be sending me DMs and stuff like that and saying, Anton, I rock with you or whatever. Let me tell y'all something. Unless you making, unless you're going to be making five to $10 million a year for the rest of your life for the next 30 to 40 years, get a regular home or build cash. Let me say it again. For a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all that's getting money, but the money is temporary and it's going to run out eventually because you're not going to play basketball forever. You're not going to play football forever. And you didn't make the type of money that LeBron James make, which is 98% of the rest of y'all get a regular home. Anton, why do you get a regular home? A, it's going to be a, be a more affordable, which means you'll be able to maintain it after you get out. Even, even if the home is paid off, now you'll be able to afford the mortgage, uh, not the mortgage, the property taxes, the maintenance, so on and so forth. That's number one. Number two, you, you tap into the majority of the buyer. So when you say within a certain range of your purchasing power, you tap into the majority of the buyers that ultimately can afford to purchase a home. If you at the top of the market, Right. If you over there and you selling a two, three, four, five million dollar home, you basically get rid of 98, 99 percent of anybody that can actually compete to be able to buy your home. And so you got to make sure that you get into the right market, that you stay in the pocket. And unless you Oprah Winfrey or somebody like that or LeBron James, you cannot put yourself in a position where you purchase this big extravagant home for the gram in order to try to impress people that don't care anything about you. And so I'm trying to help y'all to understand that you have to literally make a good financial decision, not stunt for the gram. And a lot of y'all not even going to use the majority of the home that y'all purchase anyway. And so you doing it just for aesthetic purposes in order to show people and y'all not even going to use the home. Buy the home based off of utility. Buy the home based off of function. Buy the home based off of the, the area that it's in and, it, and it's got great schools, don't do it because you're trying to stun on everybody. Or if you're going to build this phenomenal home, then build it outright, but don't necessarily spend a whole lot of money to try to purchase something and stay away from HOAs. Make sure you limit the amount that you're paying in property taxes. Now, listen, man, st <sighs> doing something that you can't sustain is dead. Doing something that you can't sustain is dead. I, I have more respect for a person that is able to pay off their home and buy their home and, and be mortgage free outright than the person that is living in a multi-million dollar home and got a mortgage. I think that the person that can buy their home and eventually pay off that mortgage outright is smarter than we think and we look at the big McMansions and we say, well, but they ball and they in the mansion. Now they got a high ass mortgage and they worried every single month that the market is going to change on them. And so they're trying to get out at the top of the market. <sighs> Meanwhile, over in Houston, this is Houston. Good evening to you. I'm Tom Ziska. We're glad to have you with us. Now to homeowners in Ireland taking a unique approach to prevent flooding. They're raising their homes to keep floodwaters at bay. Fox 26's Jade Fleury is there live tonight with those details. Jade. 
Tom, lifted homes like this seem to be the new norm here in Myerland after the neighborhood continues to get hit with floodwaters. Some homeowners choosing to elevate their existing homes, while others are choosing to tear them down entirely and rebuild feet above the ground. This basically became so popular when there was a lot of flooding event a few years back. The Meyerland neighborhood has faced its share of. I'm going to read that super chat in a second, C.E. Max. Flooding challenges over the years. Now homeowners taking matters into their own hands by raising their homes above ground level. We made a deal where if we did flood again, that we would either um, tear the old house down and build a new one like we did here, uh, or... Um, you know, just move, sell it as is, move away. Homeowner Arthur Kay says he's lived at his current property in Meyerland for about 25 years. Since then, his home has flooded three times. Once during the Memorial Day flood in 2015, a second time during the Tax Day flood in 2016, and most recently during Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Outside the house, it was like three feet of water and um, inside the house it was over two feet of water i can't do it bro i can't do it listen i heard that over in houston and in some parts of texas you got to be careful of where you purchase in a home because it's in a flood zone what man i'm straight bro if i gotta build my house sitting up on stilts in order to prevent it this is why look basements in a lot of places like in Florida and in, in Houston and stuff like that is non-existent. They don't have basements. Every home that I build over in the Midwest, I put a basement. I put a finished basement in. I got a whole ensuite in the house that I'm finishing up now that a lot of you bag chasers are familiar with. I got a whole ensuite and a basement in there um, that I'm building out. But that's not a thing over in Florida. It's not a thing over in Houston. Why? Because they got flooding issues. And so having to put your house up on stilts or up in the air or tear down your house and rebuild it up in the air because you worried about flooding is insane. But shout out to y'all over there in Houston. Uh, thank y'all for the good content. And thank y'all over in Florida for being in a bubble. Let me read some of these super chats and then I'm going to continue on with the show. Jay Johnson says, yeah, Rubio's been expensive here ever since he was a kid, but figured, but I figured that tree would fall eventually. It's insane over there, man. Y'all got to be careful. Say Max says, uh, morning AD and the chasers. Broward, I'm in Broward. You said housing issue is similar to the two. Only in Florida is getting there. It's not quite in 2008. Nothing is like 2008. 2008 crisis, would that be an opportunity for re, uh, real estate investors? I don't think so. I don't think so. If it's me personally, if it's, if it's me personally, I'm trying to get the hell out of the market. If you like Florida, then I would go and purchase every piece of real estate that I'm purchasing at this point is an investment property. And I'm using my own money in order to do it. Anywhere where an insurer is pulling out of is a place that I'm getting out of too. So once I start seeing insurers get, get out of the market, I'm getting the hell out of that market also. And if you just still want to be in Florida, then that's why they make planes. Or if you job bound, then don't be tied to it. But I'm not investing. I'm not... I'm not going to tie up because most people, when you think about them from a financial perspective or you think about their net worth, the majority of their net worth is tied up in their homes. Why would I put that at risk? I'm never going to be in a position where I put the majority of my net worth at risk by staying in a market at the top of the market. Dude saying that he just recovered from 2008. And now we almost in another bubble and he's trying to figure it out. I'm not doing that. I'm never, ever putting myself in that position. So shout out to you. That's a phenomenal question. I appreciate y'all for supporting the platform. Um, I would, I wouldn't, I'm just not, I'm not investing where insurers are pulling out. That's my time to leave. That's my sign. Y'all got to know when to take your profits and run. And you usually want to take your profits and run before everybody else gets to the market. Um, so when I seen things hit a certain level, if I'm not looking to hold on to the to the investment or the property forever, and we're going to go over that in Stock Club tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. to Eastern tomorrow, Stock Club, then I'm taking my profits and I'm running, all right? 